are six and a half million horses in the U.S. Every year, thousands of these horses travel our highways. They may be headed to the races, to the rodeo, to work, to a show, or just to the park for a great day on the trails. No matter where they're going, horses and trailers on the road mean that an accident involving them could occur, and that emergency personnel must have the knowledge to handle these beautiful animals who are our passengers, the very special passengers they are. For in addition to the considerable financial investment that owners make in their animals, there is, of course, a very strong emotional investment there as well. As with all beloved pets, horses soon become just like part of the family. Horse owners work to protect them with the best feed, stabling, and veterinarian care. Should an accident occur when horses are being trailered, you are the first defense. Owners will depend upon you to know how to safely rescue their equine friends. The biggest concern is the horse not to um, go in and, and you know rile the horse up any worse than what it already is. Because um, usually by the time we get there, the horse we understand if once they know that they're trapped, they will calm down if they know somebody's with them and they're there to help them. Horses are relatively docile creatures and all will respond to a soothing voice and stroking on the neck. Loud noises, particularly from objects that can't be seen and that are totally unfamiliar in their daily lives, can be terrifying to a horse. Horses are creatures of habit. They will get used to something in a very short time. They also have great trust for human beings. What you will see in the next few minutes will help you to best react when an accident involving our equine friends happens on your roadways. It is a total system of response that's recommended by veterinarians and emergency response teams experienced in horse trailer rescues. Demonstrations of safe techniques for horse restraint and extrication have been practiced by the team documented in this presentation. It's very important that uh, you know how to handle a large animal. These animals weigh over a thousand pounds and they have a great deal of power and just in an effort to free themselves they could seriously injure, injure a rescuer. So you have to know how to handle them, how best to approach them, how not to upset them because they're already upset. They have a natural survival instinct and you have to let them know that you're there to help them and you can't talk to them like you could a person. You have to show them in the way that you act around them. You can't be nervous around them or else that nervousness is translated or transferred to the horse. The correct response to a horse trailer accident has begun. To have an effective response when horses are involved, state police, ambulance squads, and fire and rescue services must be directly linked to local emergency communications networks and CB channels, and must have a current list of veterinarians who will respond to assist with horse rescue at trailer accidents. Divided by geographical locations, this list is an essential part of an effective rescue response, allowing the veterinarian to be notified as quickly as possible greatly increases the rescue team's ability to successfully work with the horses at the scene of the accident. Dr. Stephen Dye has trained emergency personnel by creating extrication drills dealing specifically with horses that are trapped in trailer accidents. By use of a mannequin horse, Dr. Dye shows how to tie a horse to restrain it for removal and how to create a sling to lift the animals out if necessary. We do recommend that such a drill be included in all emergency response training programs. One of the things that I think is very important, one of the important reasons that you need to have a veterinarian come to the scene of the accident is not all of the horses that are in these accidents are going to be salvageable. Some of them are going to be injured to the extent that we're not going to be able to piece them back together and they would have a normal life. And it's very important for a veterinarian to be there and, and survey the situation and make that decision. Because if you're going to make that decision to humanely destroy the horse, humanely destroy him right then. 
don't take the risks of getting people hurt or getting yourself hurt, trying to get him out, just put him to sleep. Fortunately, in most cases, horses that are trapped are not seriously injured. They will usually lay quietly until freed. As we see here in a harness racing spill at Freehold Raceway, horses do respond to the soothing voices and stroking of the rescue team, and they will wait patiently until they can be untangled from the tack. Although you might have expected serious injury in such a spill, you can see that most are unhurt and are eager to get to their feet when freed. You'll need to prepare for a horse trailer accident by keeping a multi-sized nylon halter and a long cotton lead shank as part of your basic equipment. A shank is really just a horse leash and is used to lead and guide the animal. In the case of an accident, you'll need a length of rope that will reach out of the trailer at least 10 feet. Soft cotton rope, 5 8 inches wide, is also essential. Lengths of 200 feet may be required, and the lengths you need for any particular accident should be cut after arriving on the scene. A pair of earplugs for the horses is another required tool. We made these very simple, with nylon stockings filled with cotton. Blocking out the terrifying noises for the animals will make dealing with them a whole lot easier. We'd also recommend that you keep deerskin or leather gloves with these tools. The necessity to work with the ropes to extricate the horses requires supple hand protection. Plan to turn your sirens off as far away from the accident scene as prudent. And of course, your first job is to assess the human involvement. Are there people trapped or injured? This is within your experience as emergency response specialists. The first thing that you need to worry about or look for are humans that might be injured in this trailer wreck. Now, in a two-horse trailer, normally, there would not be an attendant in the back of the trailer. Okay? But in the bigger rig, six, eight, 12 horse trailers in our area, there are attendants almost all the time in the backs of those big semi vehicles, semi trailers. And so the first thing that you have to look for after you get on the scene is are there any people involved? Are there any caretakers that are underneath those horses in the back of that trailer? Because that's the first thing you're interested in getting out. If there are loose horses on the scene, you must capture and restrain them to prevent further accidents from happening. Approach a horse slowly and quietly, and always on his left side. Stay near the shoulder and head. A soothing sing-song voice will keep the horse's attention and allay his fear of you. If the horse has lost his halter in the wreck, you can utilize the equipment you have to slip a rope around his neck, like this. Horses are used to being led and usually will respond accordingly. They'll go where you want them to. If you have a halter, after restraining the horse around the neck, you can simply slip the halter on. Then clip the shank under the chin like so. Always stand quietly. Chasing a horse will only frighten him more. If horses are trapped in the trailer, the best possible scenario is to extricate them through the rear or side door without the need to cut the trailer itself. Knowing how to correctly restrain the animal is necessary for its safety and for yours. Knowing what breed of horse you'll be working with certainly helps. Standard breads, thoroughbreds, and Arabian horses are called hot-blooded. They are all offspring of three Eastern Foundation stallions, the Byerly Turk, the Darley Arabian, and the Godolphin Arabian, who reached Great Britain in the 16th century. These breeds are the most high-strung and easily excitable horses. Each animal, like people, has its own unique personality. If the owners or caretakers are unhurt, they will be of great help for you. Dr. Dye tranquilized his young standard bred stallion, David, in order to demonstrate the best way to safely tie a horse for extrication. Always work with a member of your team, soothing and stroking the horse in a position to hold its head down if necessary. Since most horses are cross-tied with a chain on either side of their head when in the trailer, you may need to cut them loose by cutting the halter off. In this event, you can very simply make a halter with a piece of your rope by making a noose to put around the horse's neck just under his jaw, like this. Loop it over the nose and back through the throat loop. Make a simple knot, and there you have a halter. Use earplugs to help calm the horse. One of the most common situations you will face is a trailer on its side with horse's legs caught under the dividing partition. Most two and four horse trailers are designed with back or side doors and horse stalls are side by side. Another design is called a slant trailer. Horses will be standing side by side here too. Each stall width is about 36 inches. 
By using the ropes and the following restraining techniques, you can maneuver a horse into the smallest package possible so that he can be pulled or lifted from the trailer. With this board representing the middle partition of a stall, here is the correct way to free a horse's legs. By looping your rope around the pastern, which is this sloping angle to its hoof, you can fold the horse's front legs close to its body to make it into a smaller package for removal from the trailer. Always work on a horse from a position behind its back, reaching over its body to reposition his legs. Remember, horses have a wingspan. They can kick you with front and hind legs. If the partition is stuck on a horse's legs, you can use a tire iron to pry it up. The hind legs must be tied just like you did the front. Note, the stifle, located here, is the knee joint of the hind leg. Press to make sure it is not locked before working to bend legs for restraining. Now you have all four legs tucked into the body and hopefully can work to pull the horse out of the trailer through the doors. The horse's tail is your tool for pulling a horse. A tail tie is essential for doing this. Working with several feet of rope, loop it around the tail like this. Be sure that you are placing the rope at least two inches below the end of the bone so as not to injure the tailbone when you pull. The loop will go around the tail and be tied securely here. Once this is complete, use your team to pull the horse up onto its back and literally slide it out of the trailer. Use a bodyboard or some form of padding if there are jagged edges. Again, pull the tail rope smoothly. Don't jerk it. Pull on the ropes restraining front and hind legs. Pull the horse up onto its back and slide it out. Another common scenario is the need to lift a horse out of the trailer with a winch. If this is the situation that you face, you must create a sling. A practical device for helping a horse to its feet and supporting him temporarily, this method requires at least 100 feet of the soft cotton rope. First, create a bowl and knot to make a noose large enough to go around the horse's neck and shoulders. This knot is very useful. It will not slip or tighten. Make a loop like this using the bite. Tie an overhand knot with the two strands. Put your right hand through the bite like this. With your right hand through the bite, grasp the knot. And with your left hand, hold the bite as shown. Then move both hands in the direction indicated by the arrows, thus pulling the knot through the bite. Release the bite from the left hand, but continue to hold with your right. Pull the ropes to form a noose like this. This knot should then be placed under the horse's chest. Make sure the noose is down around the shoulder so as not to cut off the animal's breathing. Run one side of the rope through the front legs. Lay it over the chest. Cross over the back and inside the stifle on the opposite diagonal side. Bring the rope back up through the thigh and around the tail head and back up and under the collar. When you have done this on both sides of the horse, tie the final knot here. This is the balance point of the horse. You can hook a winch to this knot and lift the horse out of the trailer without injuring him. An old canvas fire hose could be used if cotton rope is not available. Let's look one more time. Form the noose and collar with the bowl and knot. Run the rope up over the back and around the stifle on the opposite diagonal. Bring the rope back up under the thigh, around the tail head, and back up under the collar. Tie ends of rope together like this. Now you can lift the animal without injury. Have a list of veterinarians that you can count on to respond with you. Arrive quietly on the scene, no sirens. Horses are very afraid of unfamiliar noises. Capture and restrain any loose horses on the scene. Soothe animals by talking to them, rubbing their neck. Keep a multi-sized nylon halter, horse earplugs, and lengths of cotton rope, as well as heavy deerskin or leather gloves as part of your emergency equipment. Always work from a position over the horse's back. He may try to bite or kick. Fold all four legs at the knees and hocks close to the body by looping your rope around the pasterns. Use a tire iron if necessary to lift a partition or stall wall. When all four legs are restrained, tie the tail to use to pull the horses out. By rolling the horse up onto its back and steadily pulling the tail rope, slide the horse out of the trailer. If you must lift a horse out of a trailer, devise a sling. Using a bowl and knot, devise a collar, run rope under front leg, around the chest, over the animal's back, and around the opposite hind quarter, and around the tail end. Do the same for the other side. Tie the ropes together here, right over the horse's withers. This is the balance point of the animal. Hook a winch to this and lift. 
be sure the collar rope is placed around the shoulder rather than neck to prevent cutting off the horse's breathing. Always remember that a horse is someone's beloved pet. Although the most desirable way to extricate a horse from a trailer is through the rear or side doors using the restraining technique previously demonstrated, as emergency personnel you know that the worst case scenario is the one you need to be prepared for. Pre-planning means the difference between order and chaos on any accident scene. Well, when you first arrive, the most important thing is the scene security. You want to be sure that you block off any bystanders from getting up close to the horse. You also want to prevent your members from approaching the rear of the trailer as much as possible. You want to set up a safe zone where you're going to keep everybody out except necessary people. You're going to try to hold noise to a minimum, setting up your heavy generators away from the area. Even though the horse's ears are plugged, there's still a lot of noise in an extrication scene. So you need to try to minimize that, and by getting as much distance from the equipment to the trailer, that will help with that. The first thing you have to do is look at the position of the trailer, where it's sitting. Is it standing upright? Is it laying on its side? Is it laying on its roof? What's the position of the horses inside? Your easiest way to take a horse out of a trailer is to go through the rear doors. That's the largest opening. It's naturally provided, and it's structurally supported. If that doesn't work or it's not going to be efficient for what you need to do, you need to look at your other options, which is removing sections, perhaps the roof, perhaps side panels. One thing you want to avoid in cutting are any structural members that don't have to be cut. You don't want the trailer to lose its integrity and to collapse on top of the rescuers or the horse. If the trailer accident you face has rendered the animals with no opening to be extricated from, the trailer itself must be dismantled. Most new trailers are designed with a combination of fiberglass and aluminum with steel reinforcements. Most older trailers have more steel. Here is a typical two-horse trailer with entry doors at the rear. This floor plan shows the design, including the stall partition. Here is a typical four-horse trailer. Note the placement of horses in this trailer, or you may encounter a slant load trailer like this. Note the placement of horses in this kind of trailer. If a trailer is on its side, horses may be piled on top of each other. Always work to get the veterinarian into the horses to treat injuries and to sedate or anesthetize them before you begin to stabilize the trailer. Earplugs for the horses are absolutely essential before doing anything. First, tie all of the doors back and chalk the wheel to keep it from moving around when you work to cut it. Stabilizing the trailer may require the use of a tow truck and winch. Stage your tools and always place your generators as far away from the trailer as possible. The noise and vibrations from the cutting tools will terrify a horse. Again, make sure the vet has anesthetized the animals and you have placed the earplugs before you proceed. In order to safely restrain the horses, utilize the tying techniques shown in the first segment of this presentation. Make sure horses are securely tied before pulling or lifting them from the trailer. You figure some of these horses will work some big money. Um, you don't want to, you know, go out there and have somebody saying, well, you know, they should have done this, they should have done this, they could have done this, we know they can do this. So I think it's, you know, get in touch with your, you know, area veterinarian, have a drill. Well, the confidence level is everything because as you approach the trailer and you have this animal that's thrashing around, you have to know how to put it at ease. And if you cannot put the animal at ease, you can't help the animal. And going up to the animal, you're only going to hurt yourself and possibly further injure the animal. The additional training helps you be at ease so you can then put the horse at ease and you can do the job you need to do. Arrive quietly, no sirens, please. Secure the scene of the accident. Stage your equipment and set up generators as far away from horses as possible. Determine position of trailer and horses and ascertain trailer design so as not to cut supporting structures. Chalk wheels and tie back trailer doors. Use earplugs on horses and make sure a veterinarian has anesthetized the horses before using any power cutting tools. Horses are terrified of the loud noise and vibrations. Use truck and winch if necessary to secure trailer. We'd like to offer special thanks to David for working with us to teach you how to save other horses' lives. Horses provide love and enjoyment for their owners as well as being a very powerful economic force throughout the nation. No doubt they'll continue to travel our nation's highways for a long time to come. Being trained to care for them, should a tragedy occur, is a basic responsibility for emergency personnel everywhere. <laughs>